Good evening, everyone. Happy to see that so many of you uh, are here in the room the first day of uh, the, Gothenburg book, the, the Gothenburg Book Fair is coming to an end. My name is Anna Sundström and I am the Secretary General of the Olaf Palme International Center. But before we uh, head home from uh, Svenska Messan and the Book Fair, we have one very important uh, thing to do. We are about to launch a book uh, that has been uh, uh, talked about for quite some time. And uh, we are also about to remember one of the icons, one would say, when it comes to the Swedish and South African relations during the anti-apartheid struggle. The close relations between Sweden and South Africa began in the 1960s when the Swedish government, but also a large part of the popular movement in Sweden contributed to the fight against apartheid. Through extensive and far-reaching support, both politically and also financially and, humanitar and with also humanitarian support. This became the foundation for a very strong and found relationship. There is not only one person, of course, to give thanks to for this, but some uh, was especially important. And one of those were Lindive Mabusa. Between 1979 and 1986, she ran the ANC support or representative office here, or here in Stockholm, I almost said. I just arrived from Stockholm, so I'm a bit confused. Maybe my soul has, needs to, to come, up, uh, come to me here in Gothenburg. But in Sweden, one would say, and uh, of course it was, it was situated in Stockholm. Her contribution to the Swedish support to the struggle against apartheid cannot be underestimated. And tonight we are now going uh, to remember this and also to honor Lindive by launching her book. And to do this, I introduce to you Mrs. Nokave Mafu, the Deputy Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture from South Africa. Please welcome up on stage. Do you want to say something now? You will have your afterwards, yes, yes. yes absolutely. So we will hear from the minister in a little while and we will also have some other guests here on stage. But first, uh, you have now the honor of unveiling this book and show it to the audience. Am I doing this alone? Yes. I mean, not both, but individually. Oh, please. Yes. More can, of course, join. <laughs> Thank you so much, and as I said, you will shortly uh, join us again. And, uh, but before that, we have also the honor to have here with us the co-author of the book, as uh, Lindive Mabusa herself unfortunately has passed away uh, only uh, in December last year, and therefore, of course, does not have the opportunity to be here. We still have the co-author of the book here with us, Vali Seote. Please uh, come up on stage. Magnus Valan will also join us. He's a well-known activist in the struggle. Uh, please, yes, take a seat wherever you feel comfortable. And lastly but not least, we also have with us Ambassador Mandla, uh, the South African ambassador to Sweden.
and of course also a uh, personal friend of, of Lindy Vemabusa. So we are very happy that you can also be with us here today. So uh, I think I will want to start with you, uh, Mr. Sorote, to give us a little brief uh, on the book and give us a bit of background on how it came about and of course also inspire us all to pick up a copy and, and read it after, after this uh, session. You have a mic there in, on the side, so you can sit in your chair, yes. My sense is that I should uh, do what Cicely Indy would like me to do. Hold close. If you could hold a little closer, me? it's on, but you need to hold it close. I was saying that my sense is that I should do what Cicely Indy would like me to do. I must read you a poem about the process which has made us now sit here. We remember you, Sis Lindy. You are so far, so close, Sis. You, as you must, you glide and sail above here at the Gothenburg World Fair book, book Fair. We are guests of honor here. And you, as you should, you move and sail in slow motion as the wind does. You have ceased to search for truths, for you know them all now. To not repeat truth, our Sweden, is not to know yourself. Let me report, Sisi. We are here. Can I stand there? Of course, please. We are here from home, we have landed here, we have arrived here, our great country has rubbery knees and wobbly, wobbly legs at present, and it walks like a nyaupa dazed junkie. It is naked and it smells like, like sewage. Even, as, even us who belong to it look at it as we close our nostrils and mouths, and we cannot recognize it. Ah, Comrade Lindy, that's when you left. You and many of our comrades, like Billy Mudise, you all lived there and left from there with broken hearts. You all, you fought fascism from here where we are and there where you were. The world is witness like a bird perched on a tree near the sky, scanning the earth. Comrade Lindy, and you being you, with precision, you prepared the record and you put the last full stop and you bid us farewell, Sis Lindy. You dubbed the record that you are leaving behind so far so close. I should know, I was witness, I, worked si I walked side by side with you, wearing a brain of an elephant, and as, as for so far, so close became a reality which we'll read, which we'll realize, which we'll live through. You were one among a few of us who could create and keep that, that record, and now, you wear the best eye view with the many eyes of your comrades with whom you now commune and reside. Then you were like a leopard when you worked. You focused on life and death as if it was a war like a leopard does when it is hungry. Certainly you, like a good leader, you have you you have by now, you have by now reported to OR and to Olive, Olive Pamle, the great leaders of our country. You said to them, watch, 
witness, and let's listen what they will be doing there at Gottenberg. Here we are, Sis Lindy. We deliver the record that you left with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and of course, the, uh, the uh, title of the book is also so far so close to also really underline how close we were in the struggle, yet by distance quite far away from each other. Magnus, uh, if you would uh, give us a little bit of, of insight and give us a few of your memories from, from this time and also what it has meant for the, uh, well, the struggle, but the movement, I, I mean, it, it, it's hard to even imagine a stronger movement of solidarity in Sweden than during these, this time and, and in this struggle against apartheid. Give us a few of your, your memories. Um, I think it was an extremely good strategy, which uh, I think it was B Billy Modise who said that the ANC had a strategy not just to meet the politicians in Stockholm, but to knock on the Swedes' home door uh, and to build a grassroots movement. And I think that Lindiva became uh, a mother of that uh, movement. And the support for the anti apartheid struggle and for the ANC, uh, which were important from Sweden, but it didn't come that easily. It was hard work. It was hard work and we pushed the politicians. And it was a movement. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you, I mean, introduced as an activist because we were a movement. And it was the churches, it was the unions, it was the youth organizations. Uh, and uh, we were organized in, in the Africa group, in the Isolate South Africa Committee. Uh, and I think that the book actually, which I think is also very clearly Lindiva, who actually also wanted to have voices from uh, Falun, uh, from Dalarna, from uh, uh, different parts of Sweden. Uh, and I think that uh, in that movement, I think we were 78 national organizations, but on, on our heights, uh, on our top, uh, I think we were 160 local committees who was part of the annual campaign week. I don't know if there's any been a movement since then who have been organized in that way uh, in, in Sweden. Um, and I think that the message um, that came across from Lindiva, whom traveled up and down in Sweden to all these places, was that you don't need to be important, a politician to be important. Uh, small actions are important, and you can be part of it. And I think that was the, the, uh, the inspiration, uh, which I think was extremely important. Um, and another aspect, m when writing history, it's quite often Stockholm, it's quite often politicians, uh, it's quite often diplomats. But in this movement, it, was, it is quite often men. Uh, but in this movement, it was mainly dominated by women in the choirs, in, in the local committees, etc. And I think that also needs to be, to be recognized. Another thing which I think is important, which is also part of the book, which I write about also, is that uh, the sanction work we did, uh, did matter. Uh, it, uh, it contributed uh, to uh, weaken the apartheid government. I think it was the former Minister of Foreign Affairs who, who, who actually admitted before his death that, death, that uh, South Africa was going into bankruptcy. So I think it is, uh, we, we, uh, the struggle was made by South Africans, of course, but uh, it was uh, a hard work uh, also from so many people 
many of I do recognize here as well, and many of them are also part in this book. Ambassador, you are in a way now continuing uh, to build and to reinvent this strong relationship between South Africa and, and Sweden, uh, which is fond, as I said in my introduction, but has also in a way, of course, changed over, over time. What kind of inspiration do you think that we can also find from, from the struggle and from the book and from not the least maybe Lindive's uh, work that, she, that Magnus was also talking about? Thank you, Anne. Um, let me begin by uh, thanking the Olof Palma Foundation for organizing this event. I, 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 and I, I do want to apologize on behalf of Tembim CB, Sis Lindy was daughter for not being here. It's not of her fault. She couldn't get her visa on time, but we tried. We really tried to bring her to this function, to come and talk here. I wanted to hear what you'd say. Can I just say something so that I introduce my connection with Sis Lindy well? Yes, I am ambassador of South Africa to Sweden. But I, Sis Lindy was a big sister to me, a comrade. We met in exile and I knew her from then. We were a big family. We believed in solidarity even amongst ourselves. It was our culture. I have been to Sweden when she was a, a, the chief representative, we used to call them that, of the ANC to Sweden. She was dynamic. She was fiesta. Uh, she's all what people are saying about her. But I do want to share a bit about some time I was with her. Then I'll answer your question. In, she looked so. She looked forward to this bookshop, book book fair, a lot. In April 2021, a, the book fair in 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 I don't know. Is it called Honor of South Africa? Was to happen in 2020. Didn't happen. So in 2021. I was back at home and I took her out for lunch. And I asked her, if I call you to be a speaker at our national day, what will you say? She said, I'll say thank you to the people of Sweden. Sis Lindy says, thank you for the solidarity. I'm passing on that message. The other matter that I would like to share, she, she so much wanted to be at this book fair. She so much wanted to be here. Magnus and many others, I helped to coordinate because she wanted to have this book reflecting the comradery that activists in Sweden had with South Africa's fighters for freedom. And she did this so well. And uh, I contacted those I could, but of course you know that we were limited by COVID. What should I say? As ambassador to to Sweden, and it is part of our mission, by the way, to strengthen friendship, to strengthen people-to-people -people contact, to strengthen the solidarity amongst people. It is a trying time now politically. We see shifts in, in, in the geopolitics around us. And this is the time 
where people to people, progressive people, link up and connect for the good of all. I, I just should have uh, really paid my respect to my deputy minister, my colleague Hokan, who's in South Africa, the ambassador, to friends of South Africa, to the great men and women who stand for good. I thank you. Is that does it answer you? Thank you so much. <laughs> So, Mr. Sorote, may I also ask you, you were also, of course, contributing to the, to the book. And um, in, uh, I mean, there, there has been, of course, over the years, a lot written about uh, the struggle. Uh, we have had in Swedish a few also books uh, on this topic. What was it, uh, do you think, at least, that also made... Lindy would uh, think that we needed, she needed to also share her, her story. What was it that she wanted us to take with us that has not all, already uh, been, been uh, written down, so to say? What, uh, what in her story is it that you would like us to take with us for, for the coming struggle and for the strengthening of the solidarity between our countries as the ambassador was addressing? I think that uh, to pick up from where, where the ambassador left, the book is asking both the Swedes and South Africans, do not forget the humaneness that you established by getting together and as uh, ambassador was saying, matching people to people to create a humane living space in the world. That's the first thing. That if Sis Lindy were to understand and hear us say that, she would be satisfied about what we think about the book. But the other matter that we should uh, uh, take into consideration, we say people to people. It went much deeper than that. You will read about school children who participated. You will read about students who participated. You will read about youth who participated. And I'm deliberately going to that age group to say it is a preparation for the future. Wouldn't you say what she did prepared in Sweden and South Africa for now, where we are now? You heard what I said about my country. I was very brutal. I have to be brutal. I love the country, and I want my country to be back where it was when we won the struggle, when we, together with uh, the Swedes, shouted and said, free at last. And we meant free at last at that point. The book will say that to you. But also, if we contextualize our time now, where are we? in Sweden, in South Africa, in the world, where are we? The book will also address what, it, what we should have done to prepare ourselves to understand that we are at that verge where we are at the verge where the, the world is, is threatened. Why is it threatened? Our struggle, the book will say, was to find a manner to free the poor in our country. Give them freedom so that they are free to recreate their, li their lives, to be proper South Africans, to be proper members of the world in freedom. The book will say that to us. What was amazing about, uh, uh, what was amazing about uh, Comrade Lindy is this. As I said in the poem, she had a hunter instinct. She had the hunter instinct to, get, to find the right people to populate this book with the experience of political activity, with the experience of mobilizing, with the experience of commitment and conviction. 
you'll find all of that here, where people, both Swedes and South Africans, were not afraid even to put their life on the block. You'll find that in the, bo in the book. And I'm saying, I felt at the, when, when I was asked to come on stage now, that the first thing that I must do is pay my respects to her. And the book, which she named as she named, as if she knew she was leaving, will say everything about what we need to know, what is it that we should be doing now. I expect people to read the book, or do you want, expect me to tell you page to page what the book says? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank you so much. Uh, and with this, of course, as I also said in, in my introduction, we are, of course, honoring uh, Lindy Mab uh, Mabusa and, and we are remembering her and we will continue to take inspiration from her. And one way of doing that is, of course, also to buy the book and to read the book. And to also finish up our little launch here, I would like to invite the Deputy Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Mrs. Mafu Up once again up on stage. Thank you so much, um, Program Director, and our real appreciation to the Olaf Palmer Foundation for bringing us together here and to be able to reminisce on the life and times of Sis Lindy in Sweden. To the ambassador of Sweden to South Africa, the ambassador of South Africa to Sweden, of course, the Olaf Palmer Institute, the writers, academics, and literary institutions that are here, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to take you a little bit back. Um, in 1979, of course I was young, OR calls Sis Lindy and speaks to her and says, and I quote, Sweden stands and ready to welcome you. It is a landmark in the history of our struggle. You are going to friends. Do not be afraid. Close quote. Now, <clears throat> I'm starting there because I just want the Swedes, the Nordic countries that are here, to just understand from the bottom of our hearts as South Africans, the gratitude that we have for what you have done for our country, South Africa. And I thought it's important to do that. <clears throat> we are launching a book uh, of Sis Lindy of course, the book describes the relationship that existed between the liberation movements of South Africa and the people of Sweden. And I, as I was scanning the room, I suddenly saw uh, Reverend Frank Chigane there at the back. My greetings there. I know that people didn't see you. Now, during the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, Reading and writing was associated to only an elite group and those that in power. And I thought it's important that we start there so that you can understand the importance of the launch of this book. And this was a deliberate attempt by then, the apartheid government, to keep a certain population of the country dependent on those who are knowledgeable. And as we all know, knowledge is power. And this was seen as a threat for the government 
at the time. It was also clear that the paramount aim for this deliberate attempt to marginalize the black South Africans was to use soft power in displacing African cultural identity. Literature, heritage, and language, and ensuring that Africans became nations who had lost their heritage as a vehicle to transmit their cultural values and literature. Now, for South Africans, books are powerful weapons to fight and eradicate poverty. They are a basic requirement for a flourishing democracy and for sustainable development as it serves as an enabler to access knowledge which allows a nation to participate and to contribute significantly to the economy of the country. It therefore contributes towards the much needed improved quality of life of the people. The Department of Sport, Arts and Culture is dedicated therefore to supporting, developing and promoting the literary arts sector through an interactive program that instills the culture of reading and writing in the country, appealing to people of different ages to broaden the appreciation of the literary works produced by the sector. I am therefore happy to announce that this book was supported by my department through the book and publishing directorate. Now, in this book, the late Cislindi Mabuza brings together diverse South African and Swedes who from their own experiences describe the relationship that existed between the liberation movement of South Africa and the people of Sweden. There are many South Africans who have spent time, some of them years, in Sweden and formed long-lasting relationships. Also, there are many Swedes who spent time in South Africa and developed long-lasting interpersonal relationships with some of them living in South Africa for extended periods. The late Ambassador Mabuza was sent to Sweden, as I have already explained, at the request of the then president of the African National Congress, Oliver Tambo, in 1979. She became the ANC chief representative for Sweden and the Nordic countries, and served in that capacity until 1987. It is well documented how much she grew to love and respect the Swedish people and how she valued the contribution they made to the anti-apartheid struggle. She also emphasized the role that art and poetry, cultural activities played in the liberation movement, not only as an avenue to express the emotions of an oppressed people, but also as a call to action. This book is what the late Cislindi envisioned and has left behind a beautiful book of words, original art, photographs, and illustrations that celebrate the rich history of the relationship between the South Africa and Sweden. It is through this book that we will get a share of experiences by the South Africans and the Swedes who lived and contributed towards the South African struggle against apartheid. The wealth of experiences, knowledge, and information is kept alive in that book. Let us each buy that copy and together enjoy the roller coaster reality of the time. Just before I sit down, I just want to say to the Olive Palmer, it is so fitting that you are the foundation that are launching this book. I just want to remember when OR was here, Sis Bridge, and, and had a face-to-face a, a -face meeting with Olaf Palmer. And one of the words that he said for the first time, and I want to quote these words, he said, if 
the world decides today apartheid must go, it will go. Close quote. And you know what happened? A week later, he was dead. A week later, after he had said those words, he was no more. Now, this is a man that O.R. spoke to about him as a brother. And I just want to say to the naughty people that are here, you are our brothers and sisters. We might have to be in a different part of history right now, but never forget, you are in our hearts and we love you very, very much. Thank you so much, and with those lovely words, we will end here. I would like, of course, to thank all of our contributors, also the cooperation, of course, with, uh, with uh, the uh, South African amb ambassador here in Sweden and the Swedish ambassador to South Africa. Thank you so much. And there are so many to thank for this to ha have happened. But I would also like to just give a little special thanks to Hedda Kraus, who used to be the cultural attaché at the Swedish Embassy in South Africa. She was crucial for this book to come about. So thank you so much. With this, dear friends, uh, we are over time. And I think that we must proceed somewhere else this night, tonight. But hope to see you all here at the Global Square, of course, tomorrow again. Good night.